Uh, so this is basically just the same reaction we went through, except instead of using uh, esters, I've just used nucleophile and L. Well, why am I doing that? Because it's important to see that um, we can use the same approach for many other acid-catalyzed reactions. Again, the reason why your instructor breezed through all these reactions so quickly is because he wants you to see they're all the same thing. So it's important not to try to learn a whole different mechanism for everything. Okay, so what are we seeing here under acid conditions? Um, so just, uh, yeah, maybe you can copy into your notes first, and then we can talk about it. So we go from this picture right. down to here. So we should read from left to right. So how many protonations do we have in total here? If you take a look, we'll see there's two protonations. So we have the first protonation of the oxygen, and then... The carbonyl oxygen, right? And then the internal proton transfer. And then a protonation of the L group. Okay, so a proton transfer. Well, um, uh, a protonation is one half of the proton transfer. So it, it helps to think of those in two steps. A protonation is when someone picks up a proton. So who's picking up protons here? Well, first, the carbonyl oxygen picks up a proton. And then later, the L group picks up a proton. Uh, and it, it's good to be clear in our mind why we're doing that. Why is it helpful to protonate the carbonyl oxygen? To make it more electrophilic. Things with positive charges are better electrophiles. And why is it helpful to pro protonate the L group? to make it a better leaving group. Also, without this protonation, the leaving group would leave with a negative charge, which we know is impossible under acid conditions. So we know we really have to protonate this, otherwise it can't be a leaving group under acid conditions. All right, so remember that we would use these types of protonations for reactions down here on the bottom part of the chart. We would use this acid catalyzed for reactions down here at the bottom uh, when things are not as reactive. So we need to put, uh, make things into better leaving groups and uh, make the whole molecule more electrophilic to get things to work better here. So this would be uh, our uh, acid catalyzed, an example of our acid catalyzed uh, reaction over here. Um, so the one thing that's confusing is we ended up protonating two people. First, the carbonyl oxygen to make it a better electrophile. It makes sense that you do that before the nu nucleophile attacks. And then you protonate the L group to make it a better leaving group. And it makes sense we do that right before the L group leaves. So the, the, the location of the protonations makes good sense. Right before the nucleophile attacks, we protonate the carbonyl oxygen to make it a better electrophile. And right before the L group leaves, we protonate the L group to make it a better leaving group. All right, and then we also need deprotonations. So who needs to deprotonate? Well, first of all, eventually the carbonyl oxygen needs to deprotonate, because eventually we're going to reform the carbonyl. So one of the deprotonations, and here we leave that to the very last step, which is um, here we leave this deprotonation to the very last step when we're reforming the carbonyl. Um, so this picked up a proton here, and it holds onto that proton through the whole cyst, uh, set until eventually we reform the carbonyl and then we deprotonate. Whereas the H actually stays with the, L, with the leaving group. So that's true, so that's right. So it's not as consistent. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Okay, and who's the other person we need to deprotonate? Oh, there is no we have to deprotonate this nucleophile. Um, that didn't, uh, uh, we have to deprotonate this nucleophile over here because after the nucleophile attacks, it has a positive charge. And we need to get rid of that proton. And again, this is the reason why it's hard to recognize where the nucleophile came from a lot of the time. For example, this nucleophile could have started like an alcohol. But after it deprotonates, it might be hard to see that it's still an alcohol over here. All right, so the second deprotonation was deprotonating this nucleophile. And we've seen that we can do these two things in one step. Um, we could take, when the leaving group protonates, it can just snatch the proton from the nucleophile. And a good name for this is a proton transfer. But a proton transfer just means one person is deprotonating and the other person is protonating using that same proton. So that's a good shortcut instead of showing those two steps separately. Okay. Um, so those are uh, the different protonations and deprotonations that happen with this acid catalyst. Just have a question. You said that we use an acid catalyzed reagent or whatever. 
when you're working with esters and amides because they're less reactive? You have to use a catalyst because they're less reactive. But right? can you use a basic catalyst just yeah. as well? Absolutely. So we should probably go on now and go through the base catalyzed reaction. But absolutely, many of these reactions can be acid or base catalyzed. In terms of what's coming, so we have base catalyzed reactions. And then like clasing reactions and et cetera, are those just particular reactions? Uh, yeah, so a clasing reaction is really an example of this. Uh, except, so who, are, who uh, remember that all, we've been talking about here nucleophilic attack on these carbonyl compounds. Nucleophilic attack on these carbonyl compounds. Uh, and who are the nucleophiles we've been using? Well, we've been basically using alcohol and water so far. We've been using alcohols and waters and maybe amines as our nucleophiles. Um, a Claisen uh, condensation is when you use an enolate as the nucleophile. Kind of like an that's right. Just like an aldol, so um, just like an aldol condensation is just a regular nucleophilic attack on an aldehyde or a ketone, it just uses a special nucleophile, an enolate. Well, the Clayson condensation is a, an example of this, where we use the enolate um, to attack an ester group, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, here's our basic uh, approach for the acid catalyzed conditions. Again, a huge mistake people make is protonating the carbonyl oxygen and making it leave. But here we're going to reform the carbonyl. Okay, so uh, perhaps we should look at the base catalyzed mechanism. Okay, 